Hi everyone and welcome back to another Bork No Game video. Today's video is dedicated to a progression guide for counter sides. So let's jump right into this. Go into missions right here. Go into firm. This is probably the most important piece to progression, all right? This is going to be providing you plenty of resources. It's going to provide you the resources to build an SSR ship one day. It'll provide you summons within the game. It'll tell you when to summon so you can actually summon appropriately and not hoard your resources during certain moments. Yes, these summons are definitely worth it for progressing with in the firms because they will give you summons as you're going through the game don't forget to check your achievements for even more summons so let's go back into big firm a couple of things that it provides is not just you know the ship pieces it provides coveted credits or gold that can help you increase units it'll actually tell you when to implant units so that when you implant units it'll have a specific use you'll get some quartz which is our premium currency and you'll also get molds in order to create more gear it'll tell you when to create gear it'll tell you how to do certain things within the game it'll give you skill up materials. It'll give you APT cores that are going to be necessary in order to limit break your units. It'll give you one of these. If you go into storage, I got this from the firm's missions. And now if I use it, I can select this one and get 30 counter APT cores because this is going to be something that you're going to need to farm. That is going to be very important. Please, please, please don't sleep on your missions. Make sure to do your firm stuff. All right. Next thing, go into squad. Now, while you're in here in squad, click the ship right here. I want you to change your ship if you're still using the coffin, all right? Make sure to use something like the Normandy. The reason being is because the Normandy has more movement. It's actually better to run more movement-based ships while you are in these game modes where you have to move across the map. Of course, Glepnir is an exception because of his skills that increases ally counterattack. I showed a guide on how to get this on my previous video. Make sure to check that out. And this is gonna be one of the best free-to-play ships that you can get in the game early on. Not to mention, if you're looking at it, most of my units are not gold, all right? The reason why most of my units are either blue or sometimes even gray is because these units units are easier to upgrade. I don't recommend using a lot of gold units for free to play players, particularly because these gold units will require a lot more resources when you're upgrading them. When you're upgrading the purple units or the blue units, you get a lot of the blue units for free and you get a lot of the gray units for free. So it's going to be very easy to limit break them. Some of you are probably wondering, oh, isn't it a waste to raise like these blue units? No, because in the future, you're going to have more units that are going to be required in order to have an idle team to run raids. All right. Raids are going to be an important important factor that we'll talk about later, but these units will never go to waste. You're going to need them to perform other missions outside of the main story mission. What happens is, is you raise these blue units first, and then afterwards you build enough teams, you can farm enough gold, then you start building the gold units. Yes, you can run the gold units. If you're a whale, it doesn't really matter, but these gold units are going to be very difficult to raise as a free to play player. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, if you go into, I believe it's lab right here, and then you're just trying to upgrade units this way through implants, don't do that. That. Please don't do implants unless the game tells you to do implants. And as you all know, you know, salary negotiation is absolutely atrocious. Like Kyle Wong is like level 65 now and it costs so much gold just to raise him to certain ranks. Like this alone costs 173,000 gold. And then if you go into the negotiation phase, it'll cost even more. What I'm trying to get to is raise these other units that don't cost as much. And they're going to be much more helpful in the early game because this is how early game progression is. All these gold units, they're a trap because it's hard to get limit breaks on them and it's harder to raise them and you're going to be capped because of the fact that your units aren't high enough leveled all right that's the thing that traps a lot of players is if you go back and then you go into operations right here a lot of people think that when you're doing these things that you need to have gold units to tackle the boss no if you actually go into prepare to operate i'm going to be using games in particular and we're also going to be showing off another feature all right so let's go ahead and talk about how to s rank a stage so you you can get this stack operation ability. Defeat all enemies without retreating pretty much means none of your ships are going to be dying on the map. Three or more preemptive strikes means you are actively attacking the enemy. So let's go ahead and do this and S rank this mission. We're going to be using this team in particular, our squad one. These are the units. Kim So Bin is the absolute MVP. I'm not using Kyle on that team. And then we're going to use the power of friendship in order to beat this stage as well. We're going to be borrowing. Who can we borrow? Who do I think is worthy? Just kidding. Everyone's worthy. I think this team is actually actually pretty good so we'll be using that one and then we're going to do stack operation you see how it says we are now expending 1000 eternium we can actually spend more so now technically we are doing three runs all right so let's go ahead and hit start operation this is a great way on why you should s rank a mission yes i know not all squads have been added but we're going to be doing this for the sake of showing you how to complete a 
stage with S rank and also how to get the most bang for your buck as a free to play. All right. So as we're going through this, obviously your friends or the people who are guests, you should bring the strongest person if possible. I myself don't have like a bunch of gold units that I can use, not to mention they're so expensive and it's so hard to raise all of them at once. All right. Gold units are great and all, but there's definitely going to be a drought in resources eventually. So, you know, when you are building them, trying to level up their skills, trying to limit break them, they have a cap for free to play because you can only get so many resources for those units as you're progressing through the game. Okay, so easy win for my friend team right there. Thank you for pretty much helping me out. Look at that, the power of friendship doing its thing right here. And then we're gonna be using the Normandy because it can move two spaces. And then this dude should be trying to attack us right here. Some of you are probably wondering though, do I have enough like supply in order to beat this stage? Do I want to use the friend unit a couple of more times? No, we're gonna be using this team in particular, you know, the one that I'm running with my free to play setup. Shin Lin, hopefully I'm saying that right. Tank Kun or Tank Chen and then Kim So Bin, pretty much the best unit in the game when it comes to just like playing counter side when it's an SR unit, all right? So the reason why I love her so much is because her LMG, her light machine gun right here, just goes absolutely nutty. I know she died right there, but she pretty much just sits there and DPS. As long as she's alive, she's going to sit there and just spam her abilities. Now these units are a little bit annoying because we have some flying units and sometimes, you know, some units don't hit flying units and they can get a little bit distracted. But now everything's going back to normal. I love it when I believe her name is Sylvia launches a nuke. And look at Kim Sobin launching like a million missiles at the enemy. That's what you love to see. That's why she's one of my favorite characters in the game. She's the only one that has like the artillery or firepower like that. But I know there's a bunch of, you know, SSR units that have cooler animations and stuff. I just love how she uses like, you know, a machine gun, launches missiles. She has so much artillery within her arsenal as an SR unit. And she's just a slept unit that I know Vulcan covered it too. I was talking to Vulcan last night. We didn't talk about Kim So Bin, but I saw his video and like, I was like, I've been raising Kim So Bin. So we're pretty much on the same mindset. We completed that turn right there because we're not going to be using the friend unit anymore. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit an extra supply. Yes, the Eternium is worth it. And now we're going to end the phase because you know, they're just gonna sit there in case something terrible happens and we lose, which hopefully that doesn't happen, but <laughs> let's keep going, all right? I just wanna showcase that free to play teams can do this. I know I have Shin Jiasun or Jiasun, I think that's her name. And that's like the gold unit that can create a clone of herself. I did get one of like the packs in order to acquire a copy of her because we'll talk about it later if something else happened. But yeah, she's a pretty decent unit because she increases attack speed and who doesn't love attack speed? Look at King So Vin. I like seeing her just sitting there raining hellfire on the enemy. She does it every 10 seconds. And then when she launches her bazooka, that AOE is pretty stellar as well. Man, I just like how SR units and like the free units in this game are actually pretty viable from a PVE perspective. If you try running these PVE units in PVP, you know, like relaunching that artillery fire right there, it's very different, especially in RTA because players are smart. They can move their characters in different sections. Kim So Bin is primarily a PVE unit. Most of the free units are going to be PVE, except for Shin Lin, that's gonna be like the double SR. SMG chick. She's actually going to be pretty good, you know, just running her because of her energy ability. We'll talk about the best SR and R units as we are progressing more into the game. We'll probably do it in another video, but I just wanted to show how to progress because this seems to be a question on like, how do you get more gold in the game? How do you level more units? You essentially unlock stack operations on Act 3 or Act 4. You don't have to be in Act 4 and then you just expend more Eternium in order to get more gold in the game. And then you pretty much do your things to do big firms and you farm EXP, this, that, and the third. That's how you're going to essentially progress within the game is you are farming story stages because they have the best output for gold and you're going to be leveling units and leveling their skills. Leveling units and leveling their skills is probably the second most important part. Of course, limit breaking comes with a price because you need to do summons for that. But if you use like, you know, Kim So Bin, some of like the SR units, you know, Sylvia, you get an extra copy of her if you manage to do the pre-registration rewards and do like the free rerolls and then you acquire a copy of her. But I just wanted to show this in particular and not to mention the tank gun that I was using. You get a plenty of copies for her. Now that we've completed the stack operation and we got an S rank victory, we get more resources than usual. Go ahead and skip this and look at that. We got 98,000 gold or essentially 100,000 gold and some company EXP. So if you're wondering how did I get to level 22 so quickly, that's essentially what I was doing. And some of you are probably wondering though, what about like everything 
else? How do I focus my resources and focus my time? You can also go into supply operation and some people like to do stack operations here, but honestly, you should save this until like the late game-ish because most of these aren't worth it. Maybe like this EXP one might be worth it in case, you know, you want more EXP in order to level your units, but that requires completing episode four, act one. But let's go ahead and circle back through all the different notes, all right? Biggest thing is going into missions and completing firm missions. Firm missions are going to be the key part towards progression. It'll give you more APT cores in order to pretty much get more limit breaks and all that stuff and give you resources to increase the levels on your characters. Next thing is building squads, you know, building squads that have, you know, more purple units, more blue units in the beginning, and even these gray units because they're going to be very helpful in the beginning. And then later on, you progress towards other things. Next is farming operations, doing mainstream in particular, whether it's episode three or episode four, it doesn't matter. Just S rank a stage, do stack operation like we covered earlier, and then you can expend your Eternium more efficiently without having to do it one by one, which is absolute hell. All right, let's go ahead and talk about that package in order to get that character. If you go here into limited time deal and you scroll right, you can see I got Shinjiya, or hopefully I'm saying that, or Shinjiya. And the reason why I got her in particular was because number one, she's a waifu. And most of all, if you go here into subscription, this Royal Company Club is pretty worth it because it gives you a simulation ticket. But most of all, it increases your battlefield and battle company EXP rewards by 5%. And then it also increases the amount of credits you get. And it also decreases the amount of costs it requires to do salary negotiation. Yes, it's eight bucks for me, USD wise. It's up to you whether you want to get it, but this is by far the best thing that you can get in the game progression wise. Anyways, if you made it this far in today's video, consider subscribing, dropping a like, leaving a comment, follow me on Twitch, follow me on Twitter. Once we hit 20,000 subs, we're doing a giveaway. Thanks so much for watching. Have yourself a fantastic day and I will see you in the next one.